Good morning, bird brains. On today's episode, we're gonna be talking about why the Chubby Shuttle still looks like this. Let's get into it. So as you can see, very little progress has been made here on the Chubby Shuttle build since the last build series episode. Reason being, and this is really the only bit of bad news that we have on this episode, is that a lot of companies were back ordered on parts. This was not due to uh, me not being due diligent in ordering the parts in time. It was not due to get lowered, not following up on their part. It was simply they could not get the parts in on time. In case you guys don't know, a lot of motorcycle manufacturers get back ordered right around the holidays because they're kind of taking a break before they ramp up for the spring rush basically uh, so I couldn't get the cables and wires for about three weeks now I want to say is how long I've been waiting but here's the good news I just confirmed with Get Lowered uh, just about maybe 30 minutes ago that they are able to get the parts now and they should be shipping out by the end of this week, which means we should be able to put out an episode for next Thursday. So we're only gonna be about a week behind. But since I wasn't able to give you guys a video this week, what I'm gonna do is kind of show you a sneak peek because, uh, oh yeah, we also got parts back from Powder Coat. Before I show you guys these parts, I want to knock it home one more time to remind you guys that this build is a work in progress. It's not meant to look good right now. A lot of people are, are just, oh, they're going to be so upset when they see this. But uh, let's go ahead and show you the big elephant in the room, these red wheels. That's right guys, we got our wheels back in the gorgeous Jolly Rancher Red. I'm trying to see kind of how the color compares on camera to what it is in real life. It's pretty close actually, it's a lot closer than uh, the red looks on the Battle Donkey back there. And anyone who has seen the Battle Donkey in person can vouch for that, that that red does not do it justice on camera. But I will say that the red looks pretty good. I will say it maybe looks a little bit lighter on camera than it does in person. Uh, it's kind of like a rich, deep blood red. And it also has uh, quite a bit of, of texture and flake to it too that the camera's having a hard time picking up on. You can kind of see it there along the edge, but I think until we get this out in the sun, it's gonna be really hard to get the true beauty of this on camera. When I first got the wheels back, uh, I took them out in the sun and it just pops. It looks so good. Next up on the list is the uh, rear pulley. It looks chrome-ish, but this is actually white. It's white and gloss black. So yeah, as you can see, the inside is a gloss black and the outside's a white. So once the bike is painted, that outside ring will match the uh, actual body color of the bike. Ugh. Sorry guys, my ribs are still in uh, not the best of shape because of, of this. But yeah, let me kind of walk you through my, my design idea of why I did that white. So looking at the bike, you can kind of picture in your mind that this gray right here will be white and then the tank will be white as well. I wanted to do something with this chain guard or the pulley. I didn't want to do both because I feel like that would be too much. Also, this will be going gold and being laser engraved with the record that was on the Voyager spacecraft. If you don't know what that is, uh, looks like this. And there's a really cool story behind it. I'll let you go YouTube that on your own. But I wanted to have something in this area to tie in the white or some other color. But I felt like the white would be enough of a touch to make it look cool, but not overdone since we're going to be having a lot of stuff with the gold and the red and the engine and everything like that kind of in that area. I also went ahead and got some new tires. Uh, I was kind of debating it whether I wanted to do it or not, but uh, get lowered. Now is a Shinko dealer, so I was able to get some Shinko 777s, my favorite tire, a lot of people's least favorite tire. They are in 
pretty close to stock numbers. I didn't want to change anything up too much. I think the only thing that was changed was the rear tire is I think five millimeters thinner or something like that. That's just because that's the only size like or not that wasn't because uh, I wanted to. It's just the only size that Shinko makes but I felt like the pattern of the Shinko tires is going to look a lot better plus the performance is going to be miles ahead of those stock tires. And then last but not least is our little uh, box of parts here we have the levers these are done in the same jolly rancher red as the wheels they look nice and gorgeous i got some uh, little odds and ends that right there is the uh, mount for the front turn signals and then the uh, bushing covers for the bars just in case that's visible. And then I went ahead and did something a little different here. I got the uh, hand control covers done in white. Now, as you can see, there is only three of them. Reason being is in between episodes, I was able to go and get my hands on one of these, which in case you don't know, what that little knob on the focus, god damn. What that little knob on the bottom is, is this is a cruise control module for the soft tails. So essentially I will have the same cruise control capabilities on the chubby shuttle as I do on my touring bike, which is going to be a godsend. That is direct from Harley. The reason I didn't have it included in the other episodes is because they were back ordered as well. So it took, I wanna say about two weeks to get that in. Thankfully, uh, the guy at the Harley shop said that that was not able to be disassembled from the bottom. I found out a way to do it. There's a small little cotter pin type thing. It's not a cotter pin. It's the one that has a little hump in it. I don't know what those are called, but it has a small little pin. You can pull that out and take the button off and the whole thing is disassembled. So I got that sent off to powder coat yesterday. So hopefully that will be done. If not, it's not a big deal. I can still do everything else and then just put that on when it comes in. But I want to do something different with those because it's something that I saw. Actually, I got to give him a shout out since he's the one I got the idea from. Rusty Bagger, uh, he's a fellow Harley Motor Vlogger. I saw his bike at the Bring It Home Parade and I noticed that he had gotten his, I don't know if he painted or powder coated, but he has like a maroon reddish bike and he got those control housings color mesh and I thought it looked really good. So shout out to Rusty Bagger, go check him out. Uh, puts out some quality videos and uh, I've stole his idea. I'm not, I didn't steal his idea, but he was the first person that really caught my eye about it. And then last but uh, certainly not least, <laughs> I did the right kickstand, guys. I feel like this has kind of become my my signature thing. It's something that catches everyone's attention, and uh, it pisses a lot of people off. So I like I like my red kickstands. <laughs> but before I let you go, I do want to tell you one other thing about the bike, and uh, it's me messing up. So of course you guys are gonna love it, but it's a hilarious story. So as you can see, the clutch cover is no longer on my bike, and it is the clutch cover itself is sitting down there with everything else disassembled. The reason for that is if you caught the last build episode, you saw that I got a clutch and brake line kit from Super Dave. Fortunately, those did not work out. The front brake line could have worked. It just definitely was not ideal and the clutch line wasn't even close. But before I found that out, I said, I'm just gonna take the old one off, put this new one on, see if it reaches, since I'm gonna have to take the old one off anyways. But uh, I had a small little brain fart as I was taking the old one off. So for those of you who don't know, the touring bikes feature a hydraulic clutch, which is why you see a reservoir up here on this side, and you do not see it on any bikes with a cable clutch. So it looks very similar to the brake reservoir. That uses hydraulic fluid to push the clutch in and out, like so. Coming over to the clutch side on this bike, as you guys remember, I had this piece powder coated. And as you can hear, it is nothing but a hollow cover. You can take that off and nothing happens. You just have access to basically where the hydraulics link into the motor, but there's no gaskets, there's no fluid, there's nothing. Which sounds very counterintuitive since it's uh, a hydraulic clutch, but you can take the cover off without any fluids. And I knew that. That's not something that was surprising to me. But amidst my brain fart, I started pulling out the bolts for that clutch cover. And the funny part is, is that I didn't see anything leaking. I heard a gasket break loose. And all of a sudden I had transmission oil flooding down onto my lift. I have it all cleaned up now, of course, but basically from here all the way to the other side of the lift was just covered in transmission fluid. So I quickly put it back on and got some towels and things like that. But 
I just found it very hilarious that I was dumb enough to not remember that a cable clutch has fluid behind the clutch cover, but I was experienced enough to know what the sound of a gasket breaking loose sounds like. But lesson learned, I definitely will not be doing that again. <laughs> But it's not a big deal, I didn't mess anything up. All I did was make a mess that I had to clean up, which is funny because the very next day I drained the oil out of Miss Bird's pit bike and it's got a stupid little flange on the end of the uh, oil filler plug, which basically means that the oil doesn't drop straight down from the hole like every other bike I've ever worked on. It kind of like rides that rail and drops like three or four inches back. So it rides that rail and drops like two inches clear of the oil pan that I have underneath it ready. So I had oil all over the garage the very next day so it's been uh it's been a fun couple of weeks here in the uh bird's garage bird nest thing but yeah guys i just wanted to give you guys a quick update just to let you know that i'm not slacking i'm not just you know over here twiddling my thumbs we are getting work done it's just a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that uh is holding us up for our scheduled release but after this, I don't foresee anything causing another delay. The only thing I could possibly see is when it comes to paint, there might be a, uh, a delay on that just because paint is super expensive and I want a quality job and it's gonna take some time. So hopefully uh, the budget works out and everything goes to plan from here on out so you guys don't miss any more episodes. But if I am gonna miss an episode, I'll at least try and do one of these videos to kind of update you guys on why there's not a video. So if you like this video, go and hit that like button. If you haven't already, go ahead and punch that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.